What is up, 4th and 5th? Hey guys, we are continuing our series on scary stuff. Uh, I decided to go kind of a different direction. I'll tell you what, it is not easy to try and have a coherent thought while playing a video game. So, I actually recorded all this already, um, and so I'm just going to be kind of talking over it because, I'm not going to lie, it is... It is not easy to do. I'm already not very good at the game, so on top of that, trying to then have a, have a conversation or to talk about something, which quite honestly is a uh, such an important topic. I don't want to. I don't want to be distracted. Um, you're good watching, watching along. You can make fun of my gameplay. Um, uh, it's going to kind of jump around. This is still the same person same life from last week uh right now i i'm, I'm just kind of building a, a cool base um i don't really have any goals uh aside from just staying alive for the next uh uh for the rest of the month really so that's kind of my that's kind of my goal right now it is stay alive but i'll tell you what if you have any suggestions uh, I don't think I'm going to get enough to get to the dragon. I don't think I'm going to get enough to uh, probably even get to the nether. But uh, if there are some other goals that uh, um, you might you might see me doing, let me know. And uh, I will try and accomplish it. Right now, I'm just trying to get some animals inside of a pen. So I think that's what I ended up doing uh, most of this uh, this playthrough. But what are we talking about? Well, of course, we are in October, and first and foremost, just to remind you, just to reiterate, we are going to be back in the building on the 25th, October 25th. We are in the building, returning, and you know what's really cool about that? It is also our spooktacular. Um, this will be the first time I've ever actually experienced Spooktacular downstairs uh, with you guys, so I'm super excited to to uh, be a part of that. A couple fun things with that that I think I need to mention so that you can start preparing for Spooktacular. Uh, first off, come dressed up in your Halloween costume. Why? because you are going to be winning prizes. How do you win prizes? That's a great question. First off, if you have the most creative costume, that will be something that gets voted on. So if you you come in and, and you think that you've got a really creative costume, I want you to show it off. The other thing is the best disguise Right, so if you're walking into the building and we're sitting here like, who is this person? Uh, that would be grounds for a good disguise and could win you a prize. And that rhymed, and I didn't even write it down. The other thing is uh, uh, funniest, all right? So if you've got just a funny costume, I believe last year, a kid literally came in dressed as a house like that to me that's pretty funny I mean you just walk in just dressed as a house uh, um, that probably could be uh, uh, a creative the most creative uh, a disguise and funniest if I'm being honest that could that could sweep it now I don't think we're gonna have anybody who's going to to sweep it but uh, um, that seems like a pretty good costume there also, <clears throat> let's say you are not really into the whole uh, dressing up thing for Halloween. I get it. Not really my big, big thing either. So there's actually another way to win some cool prizes. And I will say, I may even say that this is, this might win the, the coolest of the prizes. Uh, if you bring the most friends on the 25th you will be eligible to win now there probably should we, we probably should lay some ground rules i would say 
make sure that no no just bring just bring friends maybe more than one so at least two you know try and bring at least two friends this should be an easy thing to invite people to uh um, there's going to be candy, there's going to be giveaways. Uh, everything will be done in a safe manner. I know it's a little bit more challenging because of our current situation, uh, but we are going to ensure that safety is our number one concern. Your safety, our safety, um, you know, it's our number one concern, uh, concern. So we will absolutely be sure to... Uh, um, keep that at the forefront of our minds so please please bring friends let them know let their families know this is a safe place to be during that time uh that is again the 25th i don't want you to forget this we will not be online on october 25th okay we want to make sure that we're putting all of our focus towards oh, guys trying to come at me there all of our focus towards you being in the building and you being safe in the building and having fun so that is uh that's really what uh um what we're going for all right so we are still in the topic of scary things uh and i'll tell you what this is uh um just like with the maturity one, this is such a, an important topic. I want to continue to urge you to, to, to lean in, participate in, in what ways you can, right? So you can write things down. Um, there's a couple scripture verses that uh, we'll be getting into a little bit later on. Uh, write those things down. There's going to be... Um, uh, 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 times where you can just kind of think about things again that that you're a little bit concerned with or, or things that scare you maybe it's about the future um, but honestly don't don't use this time as a means to be passive right what do I mean by that actively engage in the message actively engage in the loop show uh, and I'm going to be doing a little bit more uh, uh, cutting in between here. So you're going to see some more gameplay. Uh, you're going to hear from me a little bit more. Um, but go ahead, check out the loop show. But it's going to be very much a hybrid of me playing, loop show playing, talking, them talking, me playing. It's going to, it'll be a good back and forth. So, so don't just skip through this. All right, here we go. Here's the loop. What terrifying challenge are we gonna do today? We don't know. I'm freaking out! Hang, Hang on, on for the loop! Four, three, two, one. It's alive! Alive! Ha, 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 ha. All right, hi, I'm Ricky. And I'm Jamie, and all this month we're talking about fear, hence the spooky music. I'm really worried. Yeah, usually, full disclosure, we have some clue as to what our challenge is gonna be here in the Loop Show, and this is our script, and it's mostly blacked out. I think this word says smoke. I'm really, really nervous. I'm afraid of the unknown. Pretty sure this bit says, have a first aid kit nearby. Jamie, what if it's snakes and they're venomous this time? I don't wanna die. We have lived such a death-free life so far. What if we have to eat worms? The only thing worse than death would be eating worms. What if it really is dangerous? <gasps> Thank you, Mystery Hand. See you upstairs in five minutes, dot, dot, dot. Oh no, five minutes. That's such a short amount of time. This is turning into a melodrama. Oh, oh no. my word. Five minutes. The agony. Dot, dot, dot. Oh. I love to read. It's one of my favorite things when I was a kid. The thing I got in trouble for was I was supposed to be cleaning my room and I'd be in there reading and then like throw the book under my bed when my mom came. You know what I'd never read? Goosebumps. These things are creepy and gross. I do not do scary. It gives me nightmares. I stay up late at night. Mm -mm. Beast from the East? This looks like a koala bear that fell in electric Kool-Aid and hulked out and grew claws. No, thank you. Monster's Blood? It's like green goo dripping down creepy haunted stairs. I'm out. Terror in the Night Tower? I'm sorry, an executioner right before bed? Please. Why I'm Afraid of Bees? Okay, now this one, 
This one I could do because I'm actually not afraid of bees. You know what I am afraid of? Cricket. They are so gross and dark and jumpy and germy. You never know where they're coming from and which they're, they're gonna jump. It's Ugh. The reason I don't do scary is because I fill my head with these stories of what if. What if, what if it's gonna happen when I take the trash out and there's actually a bad guy hanging behind the trash like ready to scoop me up or do something terrible. One time I actually hid after watching Lord of the Rings and all these monster scenes. It was the middle of the afternoon and a neighborhood kid came to knock on the door and sell me cookies and I was too afraid I hid up on the stairs. I couldn't even come down. I'm too scared. I hate these what if stories. But we have all of these questions. We fill our minds with what if. What if something terrible happens? What if there's a natural disaster? I'm worried. What if my parents split up? What if I show up to school and I thought I had a cool new lunch pail, but actually everybody buys lunch here. Now what am I gonna do? We are worried and we fill our minds with these stories and these what ifs. What are we gonna do? And our days start with dread. You know, what, a, what an interesting thought. Um, what if, right? We can so many times just play through the what if game or scenario in our, in our minds. We're getting ready to go to school. What if, uh, um, what if I'm not uh, with, with the friends or I don't find the friends or I, I don't dress the, the same way uh, or I don't have the same haircut or... Uh, I, I can't impress somebody or I don't impress somebody or, or you know, I make a fool of myself. I get picked last. Um, and your brain just starts to, to create all these scenarios um, just like, you know, just like what they're just talking about. You, you start to run through all these different what ifs that really start to just pull on you 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 can't get away from it and then and then you start getting scared or, or anxiety can set in uh, fear and worry can set in um, but you know it's what's so cool is in Psalm 55 22 it actually says you know the Lord says cast the, the, the Bible says cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you he will never let the righteous be shaken, you know. And what a uh, what a a cool thought. What a what a comforting thought that that we can, in a sense, take the things that we're concerned about, that were that were um, our worries, our cares, and we can actually place them on the Lord. Right. If you if you think of a visual, uh, it's like carrying around a backpack with bricks in it. You know, I know right now we're probably not carrying around a whole lot of uh, books unless you are going to school. But think about carrying around a backpack with bricks in it, um, and and those bricks are your your worry, your fear, the unknown things that you you cannot control. And over time, what if you just started taking one brick out at a time? How much lighter your walk becomes? How much, uh, how much easier that becomes? Physically taking it out. Uh, in fact, try that this week. Get, get an old backpack, throw some dirt, throw some bricks, throw some rocks in it, and walk around the neighborhood. And then every so often... Just take some of that out. Take some of that weight out and continue walking. And as it gets lighter, your shoulders begin to relax. Your, uh, uh, your that's that is your that's your your cares and your worries. Uh, metaphorically, are these are these weights um, that can actually do physical uh, physical harm to you. Um, it can make you sick. Uh, it can make you uh, um, uh, weak or or just mentally not sharp, right? Because your your attention is elsewhere. Uh, and so that's you know that is a scripture verse, Psalm fifty five twenty two, that you can in times of need. 
and in times of chaos, you can recall. That's one that memorized that. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Um, so, so as we kind of move into this next segment, just be, just be thinking about that, right? Be thinking about the Lord can absolutely uh, and wants and wants you to take the weight off of your own shoulders, off of your own legs, and place them on to Jesus. He can handle the weight. He can handle um, your your fears and your cares because he cares for you. Hello, and welcome to Scary Stories by me, Nick Dillard. (laughs) (laughs) Scariest thing you can ever ask, what if? Never ask yourself that, because chances are you're going to come up with some ridiculous story. For example, what if tomorrow you bite into your ham sandwich that you slaved over, or your mom slaved over, or your dad? I don't know who did it, but there's dog hair in it, and somehow it's wet? I'll be okay. Guys, what if you finally get the courage to talk to the girl of your dreams, and somehow you just burp? First thing you say, you just burp. Hey, Jessica, I uh, I really look... <coughs> I like you a, a lot. Sorry about that. <coughs> I love you. And ladies, the reverse role. What if the guy of your dreams walks up very mysterious-like because you love the mysterious ones and says, I don't even know how to respond to that. Maybe it was accidental. We'll never know. What if you like gummy bears like these and they decide that they want to eat you, huh? Let me tell you, it's, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. Not today. Not today. You're mine. I'm eating you, okay? What if it's report card day and you show your parents and they decide that's not good enough, so they decide to feed you like the dog and you have to eat on the ground. That's not fun. I've tried it. Look at your dog. He's not having a good time. That's why he's looking up at your food. What happens if aliens show up just randomly? What if they came for your Xbox, huh? No more Fortnite. What if they take your phones too? All sort of electronic devices where you can't play Fortnite anymore. Heaven forbid. You know what? Maybe that would be a good thing, what if? What if one of your friends actually dug a hole to China all the way through the earth and you actually fell in it? Would that be fun? Maybe for the first 30 seconds, then it might get boring and then it might get really hot. What would happen if you're lit like this for the rest of your life? No more good selfies. And you know what? What if you never become famous? What if no one really sees you? What if you lose your athletic skills? What if you lose your looks? What if you choose the wrong path? What if you worry so much you actually make yourself sick physically? What if all of that happened? Okay, smoke scream challenge. Oh boy. Enter the room of smoke. Find the colorful globs you need and throw them at your designated area on the glass. The first person to find and stick 10 globs to the glass is the winner. Your prize is information. You get to know what the challenge is next week. Knowledge is... Oh my God. So we're supposed to go in there and find 10 of these globs. And so we're supposed to stand at the designated area in front of that and then throw the globs and whoever gets 10 wins. It's so cloudy. You want to know what I think? I think there's a person underneath all that crinkled oh, paper. It's great. This is great. Let's go. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, and go. A glob. A glob. Looking for a glob. Looking for a glob. Okay. Uh, no. How'd you find one already? Uh. Where is the glob? Oh, I found a glob. Yeah, uh, okay. Oh, wait, am I allowed to get it? Ah, you me. <laughs> Dead. Okay. What if I try, okay. like, throwing it? Like, okay. I got it. Great. <laughs> Ricky, you keep scaring me. Glob, glob, glob. Okay. Okay, I found it. Hey, that's my glob. That's my glob. This is good. Oh. I 
Obviously, that wasn't scary at all. Um, I don't think there's anybody sitting here being like, oh, that would be... I couldn't do that. Um, but you know what What built up most of that fear was the fact that the entire time, all they kept talking about was what they did not know. Historically, when they're filming the Loop Show, they know uh, the challenges, they have some insight into how the episode is going to flow and run, but in this case, a lot of their fear stemmed more from the fact that they just didn't know anything about the situation before going into it. Um, you know, we could, we could sit back and, and maybe, um, make fun of the actors in there or or say this isn't scary you know it's no big deal but um, but really it is uh, there's a lot of times that the fear of the unknown um, that that really gets to us and so I think it's something also to be you know to really be mindful of I, I liken it to uh, so I, I'm a musician I play on stage and there's a lot of things that I do um, that when I am getting ready to either get on stage for service, uh, I always get nervous before I get on stage um, at church when, when worshiping. Um, and, and I also somewhat get nervous on stage when I'm playing in a, in a show or something. I haven't done that for a couple of years. But uh, uh, I, I get so nervous as I'm walking out, as I'm kind of getting ready, tuning my instrument. But then once the show starts, or once the service starts, I'm able to to relax and uh, um, you know fall back to my training or my rehearsing or whatever it was. Um, but there was so much fear prior to the service or prior to the show um, because there was a lot of just unknowns. Am I gonna am I gonna mess up something? You know, what if I what if I come out and I just play the Right from the top, I play the wrong note, which, by the way, I've done before. You know, how embarrassing is that going to be? How distracting is that going to be? Um, you know, what if I, I get out and my string breaks? Also, that has happened. Uh, what am I going to do if if this and if that? Um, you know, there's there's just so many times, but a lot of but a lot of it. Once you get on stage, or once you hit on that field, or you sit down at that recital or you, you try that new thing out, the, the fear, the unknown, starts to, starts to, to disappear. Um, and I think there's, there's a lot that can even be said towards, towards that. It's, it's trusting in your training uh, for said fear. 
you know, I, I took piano lessons, and with piano lessons come uh, recitals, uh, where you are playing in front of other students and your parents and your students' parents. You know, there could be 30, 40 people inside of a room or inside of a house, uh, and you are now showing or playing the uh, the piece that you had been practicing for the last couple of weeks or a couple of months. Uh, and that was so... There's so much anxiety and fear for me kind of getting ready. Uh, I knew where I was in the, in the count. So, you know, the, the, uh, the closer I got, um, the more scared and nervous I got. And then once I sat down or once I was done, the, the relief uh, that it was, that was, basically it was over, uh, was just so, uh, was, was so comforting. Um, and a lot of times, that that can actually be our fear too you know there's so many times that we we just overthink things um we're we're practiced we're ready now if you're not practiced and you're not ready for that situation or that that event um yeah you may have a good reason to be scared if you're not ready for the test that you're going to take because you didn't study uh there could be a good reason to be to be scared um but but Obviously, we are we are talking about in life. There are so many other things that that we can be concerned about. It all comes down to how we uh, uh, respond to those situations. Um, it comes down to how we do anticipate and prepare for those situations. Um, you know, and and handling that in a you know an appropriate manner too. We can't just freak out and and. Um, start start crying in the corner. I mean, there's there's going to be times in life where where we just have to um, start owning our decisions. Uh, we have to start uh, being aware of what's of what's coming and how we prepare for those for those events. Um, you know, and then on top of that, when when there are absolutely things that we cannot control, it's going back to that. Going back to that analogy of the backpack, you know, weights in your backpack, in certain cases, we just have no control over certain things, but yet we still let it physically impact and affect us. Uh, and, and that's where I kind of think this, this whole um, topic is so, so important. This is where uh, we get a chance to, to say, you know what, I... I can't control this item. I cannot let it control me. You know, we it's it's just so much of all right, I got to figure out what I need to do to ensure that that I'm not being controlled by my own fears or insecurities. Uh, I need to know what I need to know. I need to ensure that I'm I'm uh, working on those things. I need to if I if I'm playing a recital or, or have a test coming up or, you know, that I'm ready for that. But the things I can't control, I have to be able to allow God to, to own and to, uh, uh, and to have, have over that. Um, so that's kind of, that's kind of the, the biggest, the biggest piece of this. It really is just what does, what does our response to fear, to worry, to what if questions, and how do we control um, control that? So when I was your age, my parents had just moved us, and I felt like I was worried about everything. And I kept this journal, and I wrote all kinds of stuff in it. I wrote the friend that I was worried about making, the friend that I was worried about leaving. I worried about boy that may or may not like me, and did I have the right haircut? We moved from the city to the country, and I didn't understand cattle and fields, and did I have the right shoes, and did I have the right jeans? And I just worried about everything. But here's the thing. Jesus said to us in Matthew 6, Guys, what are you worried about? Look at the birds and the flowers of the field. Do you think they're worried about what they're gonna eat and where their house is and what they're gonna wear? No, your father loves them and he feeds them and clothes them. How much more does he love us? So what do I do? I pray. And I don't mean that like, oh, I know you've got a math test, I'm gonna be praying for you. 
or, oh, your dog has to go to the doctor, I'll pray for you. I mean, I pray. I actually talk to God. I talk to Him when I'm getting ready and eating breakfast and on my way places and at night and sometimes late at night when I can't sleep, I pray. I take all of that worry and I just don't write down what I'm worried about. I pray and ask God, what does He want me to do right now? What is it He's trying to tell me? What's the scripture that I'm reading that comes alive and feels like it's giving air to my lungs? What song did come on the radio that, man, gave me life? I write it down because I want to remember the peace that God is giving me. So what does that mean? What does it mean to live with peace? Well, worry is when we live with this attitude that's like, what might happen? But peace is when we live knowing that God is mightier. Peace is when we live knowing that He will never let us be shaken. It was awful. We barely made it. But I won. Of course you did. What's my prize? Oh, thank you, mystery hand. Next week's challenge. Oh. What? What's next week's challenge? I can't tell you! Why not? Oh my good. No. What is it? If I give it back to the mystery hand, can that make it not true? What? Is what is it? Ugh. I can't tell you. You can't, that, that's worse than whatever oh, it could possibly it's be. it's awful. No, trust me, it's worse. <sighs> it's worse. It didn't say that I couldn't like pantomime what it is, but okay. I can't tell you okay, what it is. Okay, pantomime, what is it? Uh, oh, no, no. But there's something worse than that. Again? No, 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 it's not again. It's the first time, first time to have this on the show. We're interviewing for a new co-host for the Loop Show because I'm not gonna be doing it. Not if these things are gonna be on it. Uh, if these things are here, no, you're staying here with me. No, we, one of us has to stay. Yeah. They it, can't lose I, Ricky and Jamie. If you're sitting there, finding yourself worried about tomorrow, try thinking of this. Peace beats worry. There's lots of things to be worried about, like these. But God didn't create us to be worried all the time. You can trust that he's got you. God can calm all our fears, so give it to him and enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. But like this. I know, and like, this. It's just awful. It's just awful. So many of us are wrestling with these different worries and fears in our lives, but today we learned that peace beats worry. That we're invited to experience true and real peace. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we pray together? God, we thank you so much for this reality that you invite us to experience peace, that these worries that so many of us wrestle with and struggle with don't have to rule us, but instead we can enter into the peace that you offer. With every head bowed and every eye closed, there are some of you here today and all you've ever known is worry. All you've ever known is fear. And this idea of having peace, you're, you're, you're hearing this and you want that. I wanna tell you about a guy named Jesus. So 2,000 years ago, this guy named Jesus came to live on the earth. This is God's son. He lived a perfect life and died a brutal death to die for your sins and for mine. Because all of us as human beings, we've made mistakes. We've done things that have hurt us, others, and the heart of God. And what Jesus did is he made a way for us to be made right with God, to be forgiven of our sins, to let go of our worries and enter into the peace that God wants for you. And as you're hearing this, you know that that's what you've been missing and that's what you need. You want a relationship with Jesus and to experience the peace that he offers. If that's you, then lift your hand right now. As hands are going up, make some noise, cheer and celebrate and repeat this prayer after me all together. Dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm turning from my sin. I'm turning toward you. I need your peace. I need your love. I need your grace. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. That's the best choice you could ever make, and we are so proud of you. Before you leave, talk to your small group leaders so they can talk to you about what it means to follow Jesus and to live a life for him. You know, this is, this is such a big topic, and I will continue to say it because of just how important it really is for you to... Uh, um, to start weathering and, and knowing how to respond uh, to difficult situations, to be, um, to be okay when things are out of your control uh, and, to, and to really start leaning in and relying on the Lord. Um, you know, there's, there's so many of us that are, are going through real, real things. Um, and that is just a part of life. Um, 
the reality is we we will have difficulties uh, we're gonna have worries we're gonna have concerns but constantly going back constantly going back to Psalm 55 22 um, and there's a little bit more to that and we can we can dive into that but but all in all he will not let the righteous be shaken well who's the righteous well those who who know God's word those who follow God's word those who are believers and uh, and press towards uh, what he has for us and the, and the uh, man or woman that he wants us to become right and that that comes down to having that personal relationship that conversational relationship with him uh, and so do not let this week go by do not let this month go by without starting a relationship if you haven't or or getting back into that relationship if maybe you uh, um, maybe you've taken a step back um, if you've prayed that prayer or if you prayed that prayer of salvation do not I said this last week do not let that uh, um, go unheard or, or unknown by your leaders uh, we want to know how we can pray for you how we can support you um, literally you know we want to make sure that we are we're not just throwing up empty words but but there's actual action behind the fact that we care for you um, we have these services we do this stuff I'm playing a video game uh, not because I love this game, I, I enjoy it, but but I wouldn't be doing it if I wasn't if it if it didn't mean me hopefully uh, um, having the chance to to connect with you guys. So let me know. Uh, um, let us know. Let us know if uh, if there's anything we can do to help, pray for you, support you, uh, and just be there for you. All right, guys, we will catch you at. Uh, uh, Zoom, Zoom groups at 11. Have a great one. See you.